So hello everyone, my name is Dr. Neetu Shirdasan and I will be discussing radiology of lower limb. So the objectives of this class is to see various x-ray films of the hip region, knee, ankle and foot. We will also study the structures seen on anteroposterior and lateral views and also applied anatomy related to these regions. So this is an x-ray generating system, this is the tube stand, this is the tube stand and from here the x-rays are, are emitted towards the patient. So this elevating table is called the detector or, or this is the place where the x-ray films are placed. So once the x-rays hit the desired region, it is then emitted onto the film and you get a x-ray. This bucky stand can also be used for taking x-rays when the patient is standing, either facing it or away from it. Okay. So this is how the x-rays are, um, are emitted, emitted, it passes through the desired region and it is detected by the x-ray detector and you will get the x-ray image. First we will see the hip region, the anterior posterior view. For this image we need to keep the patient in supine position with the toe pointing towards the median plane. This is to ensure that the neck of femur does not appear short. So the structure seen in this x-ray will be acetabulum, the head of femur, they together forming the hip joint, the joint space between them, neck of femur, greater trochanter and lesser trochanter. So now we can see in this image, this is this white line is the margin of the acetabulum, this is the head of the femur and this translucent area between these two is the joint space. This is the neck of femur, this is the greater trochanter, this small projection is the lesser trochanter. So in clinicals we will see an important line called the Shenton's line that is when you draw a line extending from the upper margin of the obturator foramen and a line along the lower margin of neck of femur and you join them you form a smooth arc. But in cases of dislocation of hip this line will be disrupted that is the importance of Shenton's line. In the neck of femur, we see an angle which can be uh, made out in an x-ray. So this is the neck of femur and this is the shaft of femur. The angle between these two is usually 125 degree or you can say a range that is between 120 to 140 degree. Apart from this in the neck you can also see sometimes straight lines, white, dark. Okay. These are nothing but pressure lamellae of the femoral neck and it is called the calcar femoral. Now the angle, the shaft neck angle is usually 125 degrees. If it is less than 120 degree, it is called coxa vera. And if it is more than 135 degree, it is called coxa valga. So this is an image of coxa vera with angulation you can see. This is normally seen in con, uh, as a congenital uh, appearance or it can be due to certain diseases like Perthes disease, cretinism, etc. Coxa valga on the other hand is also usually seen as a congenital anomaly and because of this angulation it is more prone for dislocations hence seen in CDH that is congenital dislocation of hip. So the fracture neck of femur can be uh, 
intracapsular or extracapsular. So, you can see this is the subcapital neck fracture, this is trans cervical, there is another basal type, these are all intracapsular fractures, intertrochantic, subtrochantric or extracapsular fractures and these can be assessed by x-rays. So, you can see this is a type, you will see this translucent line between the neck and the head. So, this is the subcapital fracture which is the most commonest type of fracture seen in osteoporosis uh, and this lesion if not treated can lead to malunion or even avascular necrosis. So, hip arthroplasty, uh, hip and arthros, arthros means uh, a joint, plasty is usually repair or rep, uh, replacement. So, here what we are doing is hip replacement surgery. So, it can be either total or partial. In total, the acetabulum is also replaced and the femoral head and neck as well. So, the usually one end is a plastic or a polymer and the other end is a stainless steel structure. So, total you can see both uh, have been replaced and in partial only the one end that is the head and neck have been replaced. So, this is total and this is partial. Sometimes on x-rays you may come across lesions like this because femur is the most co uh, common site for bone tumors. So, in this case this is a osteolytic lesion because you can see it is much less dense, it is much more darker than the bone. So, this is a bone med, secondaries from some other site has come and eroded this bone. Now, let us move to the knee region. So, uh, knee we can have two views anteroposterior and lateral. Anteroposterior view the position of the patient is usually in full extension of knee okay? and from the anterior aspect of the leg the x-rays are passed. Now, the structures seen are articular ends that is the medial and lateral condyles and of femur and medial and lateral condyles of tibia. Okay? Then you have the intercondylar notch of femur, the intercondylar eminence of tibia and this is the inter or uh, the knee joint space which is approximately 0.5 centimeter in distance. So, we will again see the image here, right. One thing we left out was the patella. So, you can see the shadow of patella here. These are the articular surfaces. This joint space appears uh, translucent because of the presence of cartilages here. Cartilages do not uh, appear dense on an X-ray. And you can also see the fibular head. Okay, so, these are the structures which you normally see in AP view of knee. The, uh, there is a medico legal importance to the ossification center of the femur. So, the femur its shaft the ossification begins in 8th week of intrauterine life itself, but the lower end ossification center is unique bit because it appears at birth itself, right. So, the ossification occurs during the last two months of fetal life and is present at birth and the absence is the evidence of prematurity and presence is evidence of full term development. This feature is of utmost importance in various medical legal cases where one has to differentiate between a stillborn and a live born child. So, if you look at these images, you may see these translucent lines running across the bones. One may think is it fracture, but unfortunately this is actually the epiphyseal plate because of presence of too much cartilage over there it appears translucent. Once the lower end or the epiphyse is fuses with the shaft 
this will disappear this line ok. So, that is the time of fusion of these bones with the ossification centers. So, the here the importance is that once we must be able to differentiate it from a fracture only if we know where the epiphyseal lines exist can we differentiate that. Second any lesion at this along this epiphyseal plate for example, any fracture uh, at along the epiphyseal plate can lead to distorted development of this bone ok. So, these fusion lines are important because each bone the ossification center fuses with the shaft at a, a different period of time ok. So, that is important in what we call the bone age estimation. For example, in this case we can see that the lower end of femur and the upper end of tibia have not fused with the shaft. So, probably this person is below the age of 18, only at 18 this fuses. So, we can say this person is under age and must be treated as a juvenile and must not be punished as like an adult, right. So, this bone age estimation is of medico legal importance. It is also important to estimate the final height of an individual. You can also use it to see what is the age that the adult stature will be reached, when will the puberty hit and we have already seen the medico legal importance of it. This x-ray I must mention that there is actually a fracture along the epiphyseal plate. So, there is something called genu valgum and genu varum, genu is nothing but the knee. We can see normally uh, there is a slight valgus angle uh, in uh, all individuals, but if that is quite severe that angulation is more than a 7 degree let us say where the knees are pointing inwards that is called genu valgum. If the knee are pointing outwards that is called genu varum. So, you can see here that the knees are facing each other and while the patient or the person walks the knees will be knocking against each other that is called knocking knees. These are usually it can be usually congenital or due to some developmental anomalies like rickets, osteogenesis imperfecta. Genuvarum is also you can see here the knee are pointing outwards and you can see the bones are already deformed in shape ultimately leading to this deformity. This is also seen in rickets, uh, may be seen in achondroplasia and osteoarthritis as well in old age. So, this is a uh, image of patient with scurvy or vitamin C deficiency again uh, which is important for a proper bone growth. So, you can see the epiphyseal region there are a lot of anomalies seen on the x-ray. This is just a pictorial depiction this is the x-ray and you can see all these anomalies. These are suggestive of scurvy. So, this Another is osteoarthritis. So, there is inflammation of the joint space, right. So, this is the normal joint space you can see. In old age, over a period of time, due to erosion of these cartilages, the bones start to slide over each other, and with exposed nerves over there, it becomes quite painful condition. And because the medial side is a more weight, weight bearing side, it is usually seen on we can see the loss of joint space on the medial aspect. In osteoarthritis, sometimes because of these bones uh, and the friction between them, the, they might sometimes there will be bone overgrowths, ok. These are called osteophytes, these are called osteophytes and these osteophytes may sometimes break off and appear in the joint space that is called loose bodies ok that is the loose bodies and this and the patient walks he will say he can hear a noise from his joint that is due to the loose bodies. 
So I already mentioned that uh, femur is a common site, the most common site for bone tumor. So an important one is the carcinoma of bone osteosarcoma. And you can see in the lower end of femur, the tumor has grown outwards and you can see a lot of outgrowth where it is like the sun's rays appearance. So that is called the sunburst appearance. Another appearance on x-ray is uh, due to the growth of the tumor here, the periosteum gets lifted up and the periosteum induces bone growth in this region. So this appears like a triangular area of bone growth called the Codman's triangle. The, these are features suggestive of osteosarcoma. So knee arthroplasty is again nothing but knee replacement surgery, knee joint replacement, right? So you have an upper end of, uh, sorry, the lower end of femur is replaced by a metallic implant and the lower end you have customized metal plus an upper end which is uh, some polymer or plastic and these are well implanted into the bones. This is one of the treatments for severe painful osteoarthritis. So once you have taken AP view, it is mandatory that you take a lateral view as well because certain structures can be seen well in this view. So the in this view, the patient must be positioned in such a way that the knee is partially flexed. You can see the knee is partially flexed. The lateral aspect that is the tibia, fibular side is placed onto the detector or the film. The structures seen here are the larger one. Okay, this larger one is the medial condyle of femur, the smaller one is the lateral condyle. This is the head of tibia and this you can see is the fibula. And most importantly, now you can see the patella much more clearly. One thing to note here is on a lateral view, the joint space will not be clear simply because of these overlapping bones. So now to see here, you have the patella, you have the medial femoral condyle, lateral femoral condyle tibia, you can see this is the tibial tuberosity, this is the head of fibula. So on lateral views, you can see two sesamoid bones uh, if present, that is patella will obviously be present and sometimes you may see a sesamoid called the fibula in the lateral head of gastronemius, it is usually present posteriorly. The importance is you should be able to differentiate it from loose bodies, okay. So if you see a bone lying like that, you should not think that it is a loose body but rather it could be fabella, okay. So you may see loose bodies like this in the joint space in uh, chronic cases of osteoarthritis. So for an ankle, x-ray uh, can be taken as AP view. Usually uh, three views are taken in foot, AP, lateral and oblique, but we will be focusing only on two views today. So the position here is the heel is placed on the film and this is how the x-ray hits it. The structure seen here will be the lower end of tibia, fibula, talus and the ankle joint space. So now in this you can see that, right, this is the lower end of tibia, this is the median malleolus. This is the lower end of fibula and this forms the lateral malleolus. What you see here is the talus, the margins of talus, the rest of the tarsals may not be clear and you are, you can also appreciate the joint space. So this is the joint space. Again on the ankle view, what are the indications? Mostly if you suspect that there is a fracture of the lower end of tibia or fibula, you may want to see if the integrity of the ankle joint is still present or not. You want to see if there are any associated fractures and so on. So here you can see there is a medial malleolar fracture. 
and the lateral malleolus as well okay and this is the talus so apart from this x-rays are also taken in post operative periods to assess if uh, whatever treatment or uh, procedure that you have conducted has led to proper healing of these bones or not for foot x-rays uh, you may go for an anterior posterior view it is also called the dorso plantar view because the position here the sole is on the film and the x-ray is directed along the dorsum of the foot okay to the plant towards the plantar aspect now the structures seen here are the tarsal bones the metatarsals and the phalanges you may also be able to appreciate two bones over here these are two sesamoid bones in the head of the first metatarsal so in the anterior posterior view now you can see that the tarsal bones most of them are overlapping each other so you can see them clearly but you can see a few for example you can see that this is the navicular these are the cuneiforms again there is quite a lot of overlapping over there uh, this is the first metatarsal which you can see is quite thick and short compared to rest of the metatarsals and you can see two sesamoid bones over here apart from that you can also see the phalanges if there are there are any fractures or dislocations here you can identify so the ap view is indicated in cases of fractures of metatarsals or phalanges one named fracture is the jones fracture which is the fracture of base of fifth metatarsal so you can see uh, see these are all normal right but if you see the fifth metatarsal here it is oh, cut right so there is a translucency here which is the fracture at the base so that is called the jones fracture another named fracture is the march fracture it is a stress fracture of second or third metatarsal shaft seen in military recruits so when they go marching uh, too much pressure is applied for a uh, long periods of time so this leads to stress fractures and some you can see fracture line over here and a lot of soft tissue edema and so on so ankle and foot you can usually take a common lateral view here the positioning of the patient is such a way that the lateral malleolus is on the film okay and the x ray is uh, projected on from the medial aspect now the structure seen here are the lower end of tibia so you can see this is the lower end of tibia this much sharper image is of the fibula you can see that this is the talus this is the calcaneus talus articulating with the navicular this is the cuneiform calcaneum with the cuboid and you can see this beginning of some metatarsals you will see them in other images as well so you can see that this is the talus this is the calcaneum calcaneum articulating with cuboid talus with navicular medial cuneiform right cuboid with the fifth metatarsal this is the tibia and this margin is of fibula so again in this image now you can see all the bones this is a lateral view of the foot so this is the calcaneum talus navicular cuneiforms they will be overlapping then you have the metatarsals then the phalanges okay usually the fifth metatarsal you can see like this with the this is the cuboid and this is the fifth metatarsal because the lateral arch is much lower uh, or low uh, placed quite low you can see the fifth metatarsal the, uh, in this region and with you can see a large one over here this is the first metatarsal 
and in relation to that you can see sesamoid bones as well. So the sesamoid bones are quite a few in foot. So the most common site is the head of first metatarsal, two are present, one medial and one lateral. Another is called the os peroni which is present in the tendon of peroneus longus. There is something also called supernumerary bones. One is os tibiale which is present close to navicle. Uh, sorry I could not get an image of that but this another important one is the os trigonum. Os trigonum is a bone seen in the posterior aspect of the talus. This is actually a tubercle of the talus sometimes it may not, not fuse with it and appears as a separate bone. So again you should not confuse it with a fracture. All you have to do is take an x-ray of the other foot as well because os trigonum is usually bilateral. Uh, if it is only on one side you can suspect that it is a fracture. Os peroni you can see it is placed very close to the cuboid and here the peroneus longus tendon will go like this right. So this is os peroni. Jones fracture. So on the lateral view also now you can appreciate the Jones fracture so you can see a small crack over here that is the base of fifth metatarsal. You can see this is the lowest bone over here, okay. Now the x-rays of foot are again important in various cases. One is club foot which is seen in small children. The congenital condition, congenital talipo equino varus deformity. So the child's foot is like a horse's foot you could say, like a hoof. So this is how the leg would be okay uh, and there is inversion of foot as well. So a uh, complex of deformities and these can be again corrected by wearing various splints and so on. Again to monitor the improvement you can take, take x-rays and see if they are now aligning properly or not. So right now you can see there is an angulation so you have to bring it back to normal. So serial x-rays will be taken over a period of time as the treatment occurs or treatment is given to the patient. So arches of foot uh, can all any deformities or abnormalities there can be assessed by x-rays. So you can see this is pest cavus that is the medial longitudinal arch is very high and appears like a cave so you have the pest cavus deformity. This is flat foot or pest plana where the arch has collapsed okay. So this can also be, these can also be seen by x-rays. Apart from x-rays, MRI that is magnetic resonance imaging is also another way to assess uh, injuries in the lower limb, especially soft tissue assessment. So MRI is indicated in various soft tissue injuries. For example, you can see ligaments. This is the ACL, anterior cruciate ligament. It is attachment on the upper surface of tibia, extending backwards towards the medial surface of lateral condyle of femur. Any injury to this ligament can be seen on an MRI. The same way, various bursae are located along the anterior aspect of knee. Any inflammation would uh, you can see the bursa inflamed and enlarged. Again aneurysms that is a popliteal artery aneurysm uh, or even femoral uh, other distal arteries as well you can assess plantar fasciitis so on. Angiography is nothing but a contrast x-ray where you inject dye into femoral or popliteal artery through a catheter. Now this is commonly used in a condition called peripheral arterial disease or peripheral arterial occlusive disease. So this uh, x-ray would help us to assess the degree of occlusion, uh, where to put the stent, will the stenting uh, be useful or not, what the prognosis will be and so on. So this can be conducted on femoral, popliteal and its terminal branches as well. 
So you can see here, uh, this is a popliteal artery angiogram uh, of the left limb, right? So from there you can see the left anterior tibial and the left posterior tibial arteries. So, what is C arm? It is a machine which has an arm shaped like C. So, at this end you have an X-ray generator and at one end you have X-ray detector. The advantage of a C arm machine is that it emits X-rays, detects it and through this machine finally it projects an image onto a screen. So, this allows for uh, doctors or surgeons to take continuous x-rays even when the patient is on the table in a operating theater. So, this arm can be rotated and in whatever directions or whatever region again this thing can be moved and the serial x-rays can be taken for the patient. And so, before ending uh, I would like to make a few remarks that is what is the best way to describe a radiological film given to you, right? Certain points must be kept in mind. For example, the first point to know is whether this is an X-ray, MRI or a CT. So, this is an X-ray. Have I injected any dye in this? No, this is plain. Region, this is leg. Is it a right or left? This is the left leg. Which view is it? Anterior posterior, lateral or oblique? This is anteroposterior. So, now I can describe it as a plain x-ray of the left leg anteroposterior view. That is the best way to describe it. And also, when you are given a radiological film, you, your observation must always be from outside to inside. That is, starting from skin. For example, if you see the skin over here, normal. But if you see the skin on this side, can you see there is a discontinuity over here, right? So that means the skin is cut open at this point. Now you can see this is all the soft tissue around uh, within the leg, right? But if you see this is a very darker area, that is due to probably due to the blood collection or hematoma formation in this region because there are a lot of fracture fragments, the blood must have seeped out into the soft tissue, right? So, skin over, subcutaneous tissue over, now come to the bones. So, you can see the tibia, you can see the fibula, you can see multiple uh, fracture fragments, so it is a comminated fracture. So, now the inference would be that this is a x-ray of or x-ray showing an open type of comminuted fracture in tibia and fibula, open because the skin is cut open and the bones are exposed, right? So that would be the ideal way to describe. That is all for today. Thank you for your patience listening. Have a good day. Thank you.